Okay, so I have a couple things I want to talk about today. One of the things is, um, I can't even believe when I look outside now, how I can see through the trees. Like, oh my gosh. It used to be you couldn't see through there. And now you just see, I don't know, I feel so exposed. I feel like even if I'm walking through my house with no clothes on, it's like, oh, someone's going to see me. You know, I'm not like back off the road and stuff, but oh, it's just weird. It's like how your mind creates its own reality. It's like so trippy. So you become focused or hyper alert of something. It's it's just weird. And um, so one of the things I had been noticing is um, well, there's this one girl who I had been following and I had been talking to her. And there's a whole bunch of people like going through it, like, uh, relationship wise and stuff like uh you know besides the girl crying because her mom just died and her husband's cheating on her like I said there's so many of those kinds of things going on um at this girl and I had um been friends with her for a while like and she was more interactive like we would communicate in comments and stuff like that so she um which, by the way, one of those girls who I talk to all the time, she is, she does a lot of sky ones too, only she's over in New Jersey. And she, she, but she goes and she does all this research and shows like what the chemical brand, like all sorts of stuff. And, um, you know, but she's also, you know, not focused on the spiritual stuff. Like she doesn't know the other stuff. She's just super hyper like, oh my God, they're poisoning us. People wake up. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Like she's, um, but that's what I mean. Like people wake up to certain things and they don't see the whole thing. They're just very stuck on what they're focused on because it's so extreme. So she's very um, focused on there. So we always talk about that stuff. And um, yesterday though, she said, oh, you came back up on my For You page. So see, they just restrict. So it is so much restriction and you can tell. Like I would get up before and there would be like, hundreds of notifications and now you know and get up and it'll be like 33 like you can tell when they're doing some especially when it's like gaining momentum and then all of a sudden it stops <laughs> like you're getting uh uh like you one of the things was i had posted about going to the med beds and stuff and there was all these people who were interested i was getting all these comments and people following and stuff like that and that's when it just like boom everything stopped so you can tell it's like when they interfere with it it's very frustrating but you know they're taking down people's channels i saw a guy who had a couple million people who that were following him you know how long that takes to build up you know that takes a long time to build up to in the millions and um they just come in and take it away and it's frustrating it's so frustrating i can't even imagine having millions but anyways I just try and like you know I mean I was a lot more like uh outspoken about it when I kept losing the stuff like Twitter next door like now it's kind of like oh <laughs> I just got a talking code <laughs> stay under the radar because they will take you down they do not want any information being passed around they do not want people to be healthy independent taking care of themselves they want everybody to believe, like, you don't have a soul. Science is your savior. Anybody who believes in God is just, you know, irrational. And that you are, um, you know, you just accept being poisoned because they're doing you a favor, saving the earth. And if you've got a problem, well, they've got a pill. That's, that's their whole scheme. So... I don't know, just irritating. But anyways, one of the other girls I was talking to, <clears throat> I would talk to her all the time, and she's in Oregon. I don't remember how we got started talking, but sh so she was going through it. And I wasn't really super sure because she posts so much, but I did talk to her a few times because she was just so sad. Oh my gosh, there's so many people that just do these videos of them just bawling and just having an emotional, you know, meltdown, like, and so she was doing a bunch of those, and so I was, like, listening, I still couldn't figure out, like, if she was leaving her husband, or her husband was leaving her, 
or what the hell is going on. Because they have, um, I think they have a couple kids and they've been together 18 years because she would say this stuff. And so, you know, I had just said in there, you know, well, a relationship, the old relationships, the relationships that we used to build before, we weren't building them on healthy kind of um, reasons or, you know, the reasons why we would get together with somebody. It wasn't for um, a good reason or it, it was just a difference. Like so many people were in relationships kind of like, well, that's what you do. You know, that's what you got to do. You, you get in relationships and you look for people to marry and stuff like that. And it was, it was just, it's, it was so different. And so then when 2020 happened and people started waking up, because I've got people in my family going through this right now, several. And, you know, and I see it all the time on the um, social media. But so they get together with this person, you know, and depending on how long they've been together, like 10 years, 15, 18, like these are all different ones. And then all of a sudden they're like, what am I doing here? Do I even have anything in common with this person? Like, you know, they just, it's like they want more for themselves. They can see the shallow weakness of the relationship. And they can see the distance between them and their partner. It just becomes huge. And then you have to go in and question everything about it. So she was going through, you know, all this stuff. And I was just kind of saying, you know, well, when things change like that is because something better is coming you know you need to I mean you need to let go of this old stuff and heal from it you got to look at it you know and you got to understand yourself and grow and heal from it but then as you heal from it it changes you like you know you're not the same person you were you're, you're not the same person you were five minutes ago you're changing all the time like for me it, you know, when I was being in relationships and stuff and they were all just one toxic relationship after another, you know, and you get like kind of insecure. Like, am I just the worst person in the world? Like, can I even have a healthy relationship? Am I just, um, you know, a nightmare, especially when you're with people who are kind of all the same? This thing is growling again. It's just growling every day. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. Today, I do feel hungry, though. But yesterday, I didn't really eat. I kind of, I don't know. I think I'm going to do more smoothies. I keep hearing more and more people talking about it, too. Like, how weird it are, how, how weird it out they are eating the food. I feel the same way. It's really hard to want to eat stuff when you know it's poisoned and manufactured. And, you know, oh, it's just like, so... Anyways, but I love baked goods and I'm going to go up to the store. I got paid today, so I'm going to go up to the store and get some stuff. And I'm toying with the idea, do I stop by the food bank? Because the baked stuff they have is from um, a fancy grocery store here. They get all of their baked stuff. And so they have some, oh man, I had some really good chocolate, chocolate chip muffins. Oh my God, they were so good. <laughs> so I was like, maybe I want to stop up there. But anyways, um. I want to go get some baked goods and drink some tea. So anyways, uh, you know, but when I was in those relationships, you know, I, I, especially after the last one, when it ended, that was the one that really was um, uh, like a, a catalyst to my healing, to my growing and stuff. That was, it was huge when this one ended. And, and it was really shocking to me because I, he was super, super young. He was way younger than me. He was like 15 or 16 years younger than me, which I was, I didn't want to. I had so many young, younger guys who were always asking me out and wanting to go out with me. And so then it was like, well, I don't know. He just seemed so much more sincere. He seemed so much more deeper and stuff. And but I was overlooking all the red flags for sure. Or I don't know if it's overlooking. You kind of, you have a base of like how you were raised, you know, what you accept and what you won't accept. So, you know, for me, it was um, not, it, it was accepting, it was definitely accepting people that were chaotic, that were liars, 
that would drink themselves into oblivion and stuff. Like I definitely accepted that as like, well, that's the way people are. <laughs> like I'm used to it. <clears throat> and, but you know, that's something I had to heal in myself and be like, no, I don't, if that's what every single person in the world wants to be like, I don't have to accept that. You know, I, I can be by myself. I don't have to allow somebody to be in my home creating chaos and, uh, instability and toxic kind of um, behavior, just being drunk or whatever, you know. So I, um, when that one ended, it was a super shock to me because I kind of saw the power in that relationship that I, I kept thinking I was the one with all the power. I was the one that, you know, like all of the different things, you know, I made more money. I was um older i was but when in one of his episodes you know he lost his freaking mind as usual because drunk people will do that and then they sober up and they're like oh my god who was that creature last night and it's like yeah you better get your shit together because i'm not fucking dealing with that shit so he was gonna go to counseling he goes and starts counseling and then I think he went one time and then it's right away. Well, I got to, we got to go in for marriage counseling. That's why we got to go in and deal with this. I was like, I don't think you have your personal shit to deal with, but okay, I'll go with you. And he just tried to turn it into that. But that is where I found out he was suicidal all the time. He was like, uh, he kept telling me that I just made him want to kill himself. It was like, what in the hell, what in the hell am I doing to make you want to kill yourself? Like. You tell me he wanted to jump out of the truck while we were driving and stuff. And I was like, this is so strange. And so it was very eye-opening. Like, that was good for me to go to that and find that out. Because I didn't know that. It, but it, it definitely was where I start being like, man, I do, I do not need to be with this person. Especially if I'm making somebody want to kill themselves. Like, you know, go find somebody who makes you happy. <laughs> don't stay with somebody who wants to make you kill yourself you know that's you, you're getting overwhelmed by the stuff that's coming up because you don't even know what to do with yourself and you know, it's just like I just got to kill myself she makes me think way too much <laughs> so it's like so that's when I had left and I went to go make that movie with my brother and when I was there and he was supposedly stopping drinking and you know but then my daughter was going over to take care of my puppy and she said, oh, no, he's drinking in the morning before he goes to work. He's getting up and drinking um, straight-ass alcohol. And so I was like, oh, my God. And then he called me a couple times. And, you know, the the time difference, it was later for me. Uh, one of the times I even fell asleep. He just would I, – I, and I thought he was probably drunk just because – I've just been around him so many times. He was one of those people who would get himself drunk. And it reminded me so much of my dad. It is by no coincidence that this was the end of my toxic relationships. That it was just like full circle back to my dad. Of just this sitting there whining and crying about their life. They don't know what to do. Uh, just very whiny. I like if it was either losing his mind over being whiny and crying or angry and acting out and breaking everything in the fucking house. So, um, while I was gone, he was calling me, Oh, he just wanted to work on, it. he just wanted to fix things. Oh, we just, you know, and he would just talk and talk and talk and talk. Like I said, until I fell asleep and then that would offend him because I fell asleep. It's like, dude, it's fucking hours later here. And so then, um, you know, uh, I came back and he was like all gung ho. And this was right at the holidays too. And he, um, he was like, well, you know, he really wanted to work on our relationship. He knew he could do better and stuff like that. And within a week, see, it was like right at Thanksgiving within a week. I, I mean, he was, he wasn't even staying at home. He was drunk all the time. He wasn't at all putting in any effort to it. It was clear that it was, um, you know, done for, but I still, you know, I was like, oh, well, you know, you want to go with me to decorate the shop? You know, let's go decorate for the holidays or something. And he, uh, I think it was then that he told me, no, we're breaking up. 
you are going to stay here. I'm taking the camper and the truck. I'm going to go live, you know, somewhere else. And you can, uh, you can have the house, but you got to pay for it. And so then it was just like, it was a very, it was like a total shock to me because I had just at the, at the closing party or after party or whatever it is, like give a party at the end of shooting or something. And I was talking to these girls and stuff and I was talking, you know, and I even referred to my husband like a little puppy and he would do whatever, you know, and then I come home and I was like, Oh, he's no puppy. He's a fucking yard dog. So, um, you know, I, and I don't know what all was going on with him. You know, who knows? You know, I think he, I think he had a crush on one of my daughters. I think he had a crush on the guy who came and did our floor. I mean, he was crushing on everybody but me. That's for sure. So it was the best thing that could have happened to me, but it was very shocking because when it happened, I kept saying it was like I had been on this road, this merry-go-round my whole life. I'd just been riding this merry-go-round and then all of a sudden somebody just pushed me off and it was like I fell off the merry-go-round and I didn't know what to do. And it was like super shocking, like well, what do I do now, these patterns you know, I had to look at all of this stuff. I had to really see the truth. I had to see what I had developed in my patterns. And it's crazy too, because when you're really focused on that kind of stuff, things will just start falling in place. Like somebody will be like, hey, have you ever read this book? Blah, 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 you know, and you read it. And then it's like, oh my God, the message right there to me. So, you know, it was in alignment with a lot of stuff. My TV is doing weird shit. And, uh, um, but anyways, it was in alignment with a lot of stuff. And so my healing journey really began then, even though I had to heal so much stuff because I'd already had my brain injury. And I ended, I was ending a relationship when I came out of the hospital. And that whole thing was just, but within nine months, I was back in the relationship with this other guy. And, um, and then we were married a couple years later and then, you know, broke up a couple of years after that. But when, um, when I, after the brain injury, I had to do like, there was a lot of healing of a lot of other stuff. So there was a lot of healing I had to do from things, but it was, it was a lot of, you know, realizing, you know, does time really matter? Does memory really matter? Does what people think of you really matters? It was more that kind of stuff where I was really coming to terms with changing and being different and having to deal with things, you know, like you go through your life one way, you know, you know how to do everything. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, everything changes and you have to readapt and figure it out. But, you know, and, and then I was still very insecure about myself. I still was very dependent on a uh, masculine to be my savior so I went right back into this other relationship that was the most, it was so toxic, <laughs> so extremely toxic that it is almost embarrassing what I put myself through, you know, but it was, you know, what I had to do. And it was witnessed by people around me. I mean, you know, and I had to go through that to reach that point of falling off the merry-go-round or being pushed off the merry-go-round and having to look at my patterns look at my relationships, look at my own behaviors, look at my own insecurities and really face myself. That is when um, the dark night happened. That is when I sunk into this deep depression of having to face myself. And then it was like, you know, I was getting just um, bombarded. Like that was that winter that would not fucking stop snowing. It was just like my whole house was being snowed in. I was having to go out and I was super sick. This is while I was still on all of those pharmaceuticals. So I was super, super sick and I'm going out there and I'm trying to, and my feelings were so hurt. Like, you know, he's not even coming over and helping. He doesn't, he doesn't even want to talk to me or anything. Oops, sorry. And so I was just like, uh, I was, you know, really going through a hard time. And then my dog died and it was just, it was just one thing after another. And I was, I'm telling you, I was so suicidal. I couldn't believe it. And all I, I would always look up at the stairs 
and um because it was this this big drop of, of from where the upstairs was it was the perfect place to just hang yourself like it would be like boom and so every time i would look up there i would see myself hanging and i was like okay stop 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 get this out of my head and so you know i would call somebody or something like i was really fighting to stay um you know, coherent or something, not to get too caught up in the pain because it was, it was super, super painful. After that, after I went through all that, that is when it started triggering all, all sorts of like supernatural stuff was happening. Like my awakening to this whole spiritual world that I knew this whole world was out there around me, but it was like this whole new awakening to it. Like there was all this talk. There was so much more talking. I was shifting timelines. I would be sitting there and I would think I was in one place. And all of a sudden I look over, I was in another place. It was like so trippy. And I started trying to tell people. And that is when everybody started telling me I was crazy. So, you know, it was all these things. So I was already being isolated and being thought to be crazy by, I don't know, 2018, 2019. And then, so when 2020 came and I started trying to tell people, oh, I was already labeled, I, you know, I was already crazy. So nobody was listening to me about anything. But the thing is, is, you know, you can get all caught up in feeling super insecure. Like, oh my gosh, I'm just the worst person in the world. Who would ever want to be together with me? I mean, I'm in one relationship after another and people want to kill themselves. <laughs> I don't like to be with me. <laughs> I'd rather be dead and have to spend another moment with me. So I was like, um, you know, at first when I went on this being single thing, it was very much like, you know, I don't, I'm so fucking done with relationships. You know, they're just toxic. I'm not good in them. I'm, you know, whatever, all of the things that I thought. And so I was just happy being single and I was having, I was having fun, you know, I was being single and going out and going dancing. Uh, you know, there was even a couple people that I went out with, you know, and, and then I was like, Oh, this isn't what I want. And so then it was just, you know, me on my own and doing stuff. And then life just kept picking up, you know, it was like making me go in other directions, how I ended up here. But when I was, um, throughout that journey, it was like I was doing all of this healing and stuff. And then you get to a point of like, you know, I was a totally different person then in those other relationships. I'm not even the same person. I don't think, well, for one thing, I know I would never be with any of those people again. That tells you something right there. When you grow and you get to a point where would you go backwards? Would you be with any? Do you look at it and like, oh, if I could just be with them again, I know I could do better this time, you know, because I don't feel like that at all. I feel very much like they were a part of my path to get in this journey to get to where I am now, feeling good and feeling healthy and feeling like I could do better in a relationship. And I know I could because my relationships with, I mean, I have two kids who aren't speaking to me, but the one, and, and you know, that it all comes from inside those people. I just, I see this so much of people taking on somebody else's stuff. But anyways, you know, they've got their own stuff to go through and I'm not going to interfere. It's, it's their stuff. They can figure it out. Um, but the daughters that I am talking to, like I've seen the changes in myself, you know, of, if I'm triggered or you know, what pushes my buttons and stuff like that. And then I'm so much more centered. I don't have those buttons that are being pushed all the time, you know. And, and if I do, I know how to take responsibility for myself. I know how to go in, be introspective and look at my own behaviors and stuff like that. So it's like you are at this one point of your life, you know, where it's just toxic relationships. And then when you heal... It is like, you're not the same person. Like I said before though, you're not the same person from five minutes to the next five minutes. You're only the, who you are at that exact moment. So, you know, to me, that we shouldn't judge ourselves off of our past relationships because those people were different people. Those were people who were there to teach us on our path. 
And then when we get to this other part, it is a completely different challenge. It's a completely different, it's like a, a leveling up in the game. It's like a new, a new uh, opportunity to see what you're made of, to see who you are, to see what you've learned from what you have gone through. And so when I see these different people, like, you know, she was going on and on and crying and crying. And, you know, it seemed to me like her husband was leaving her and she was really sad. But then it turned into I, I stopped kind of following the story because there's so many of these people on there. They're going through this kind of stuff that it was just like. You know, I had already said what I wanted to say, so I haven't followed the story so much, but she's, I mean, it's like a lot, a lot of, po like it pops up nonstop on my thing. Like, uh, it's weird because I think like some people just post all day long, like nonstop, like, you know, I just did this, look what I'm doing, like, you know what I mean? And, I, you know, a lot of people are lonely, like a lot of people on TikTok already say like, that how much this has helped them during this time of isolation and feeling alone, how much it's helped them to have TikTok to connect with. It's so funny too, because I was so against TikTok before when it just seemed like so shallow and all these people just want to go on there and, you know, do weird shit to try and become famous or something. Now I see it's so much different. It is like a, an, a network of people who are trying to understand their reality who are trying to share information, who are trying to help others, trying to wake people up, who are talking about what they're going through. Like it is really, it is on my FYP. I mean, different people can go on there and they'll have totally different things. So, but for mine, I do have a lot of people like that, a lot of people sharing stuff. And so now to me on her thing, she is saying, that he wants to work it out, but she just has reached the end. And I keep hearing this from so many different people. And I remember feeling that in the relationship that with my kid's dad, the ex that I had just seen, that there was a point where it was just like the love was gone. There was no fix in it anymore. No, you know, it didn't matter if you wanted to come in and fix it now. It was already... Like there was nothing there to fix anymore. And, and that's what I'm hearing, you know, different people say like, and then, you know, that's a whole thing that somebody has to go through too, is like facing that in themselves. Like, because every time a relationship ends, you feel like a, a failure. You feel like, you know, something so simple. Other people can do it. And what's wrong with you? Why can't you do it? And so... You know, it's it's sad when it's people who you love, who you're involved with. Like, I can be more detached from this girl's story and a lot of other people's stories because there's a lot of stories going around about this stuff. But, you know, to me, it is when these relationships are ending, it is so you have to face yourself. And I keep telling this to people I talk to, but you have to face yourself. You have to look at yourself so much deeper. Like I said, it put me into the dark night. And I would expect most people, there's deep shit you got to face because the patterns that we build in the relationships that we desire are all from this toxic way of existing that we used to be a part of and you know everything is changing so of course you know i've said our relationships and stuff are changing everything is changing the way we look at things what we want for ourselves everything is changing and people who are stuck and don't want change you know i saw i don't i think of this it's called a cabanucci Cab or something it is this the natural spirally effect of nature, you know, nature moves in this spiral. And so I saw this girl and she was showing this and I think she called it the Cabanucci or something. And, and then she said there was a natural and a, a manufactured. And so then she put them on top of each other and they laid kind of on top of each other and they met at one point. 
and she was talking about that point in something about with Dolores Cannon and what she said with this point of this match of this meeting. So in this diagram, so you have this, this um, thing and then you have the other one. And so the one laid over it. So then right over here, so it goes like that. And then right in here is where they connected, but then it goes up like that. So, and then they are separate. So they're separate here and they're separate up here. There's only one place they match where they cross paths. And it's this present time that we're in right now. We've crossed paths. And I've heard other people talking about this with the realities. Like that we, the reason we're having all of these, you know, reality things is because all of our realities are merging in to this creation of this new reality. So it's all of this merging. But so we're all at this intersection right now of these, this cross right here of these two realities crossing and meeting. And we're in that right now. And so we have all of this convergence of information of realities and stuff happening, but it's going to split and go in two different directions. And so that's why I was saying uh, to Amber, like stay on your best timeline. Like we are really in this time period of this split. Like it's really going to go the other direction for those of us who stay on that time thing. And I think there's entities and stuff that will interfere with how you look at things to try and keep you on the more bad timeline, the timeline where you have to stay in suffering and stuff. And you don't want to stay on that one. You want to stay on the good one because when they're going to go apart. So when we, and they are going to be going in two different directions soon. Like I think it's super soon. Like I, I, I think there's going to be some big stuff that is going to happen before the end of summer. So, and we're, um, we're getting close. So anyways, but in that part is where, you know, we had more toxic relationships. Now we've come to this point and then we got to go into the healing part, but you got to go in and look at, you know, what it was in your own relationship so that you can move into a more healthy relationship and relationships are going to be, you know, a lot different. You know, the government pushed for us all to get married because it was part of their system. It was part of their control. So, you know, there's, I just think there's going to be so much differences. Like, I think there's going to be, people are not going to be rushing in and just getting in relationships with strangers. They're going to um, get to know themselves and know, like, I really, you know, I really believe this to me. Uh, you know, and we'll see how things play out. But this is what I really think. As you do your healing, and especially leaving from toxic relationships. So have you, have, as you do your healing and you face your own demons, you face yourself, and it raises your vibration. You let go of the baggage that you carry. And you start taking responsibility for yourself. You don't allow toxic people to come in and burden you with their, you know, behaviors of... Um, uh, you know what I mean? And so then when um, you get to that point in healing, then you are raising your vibration. And to me, you have in your higher vibratory um, realm, you have souls that you are, um, you know, that are in alignment with you, that are on the same vibration as you that have the same kind of, like, where you're just more alike. Like, down here, where it was, like, low vibration, you know, it was just, like, all of us were all just scattered around, just, oh, you look good. <laughs> Let's go do this. You know, it was just a lot more. But when you start doing your healing and you stay centered, you're raising your vibration. So it's kind of like you're moving out of the the goo of the pool and moving up into a clear vision of not just yourself, but you start, you know, there's other people who are in that vibration and you get more clarity. So you raise your vibration to meet the vibration of other healed people. 
So you don't go back to toxic relationships because now your pool is healthier people. It's people who have done the work because now you're vibrating in, in um, matching each other. So, like, for me, I would no way. I mean, I don't care how many of these people ask me out. There's no freaking way. I'm just, I'm not into that kind of just like, hey, let's go out and get to know each other. I was like, no, I, I did that. No, I, I'm, I'm holding out. <laughs> I'm holding out for my higher vibration person. And they all know when they come because there will be soul recognition, you know, there's no doubting it, you know. And so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to play these dating games anymore. And, you know, this one girl who's talking about, you know, ending up with her husband and it's, it's just funny because, you know, she's sitting here crying and being all emotional. 18 years. I can't believe it. And now he's doing better and he's going to be the husband I wanted for somebody else. But then I just don't want him. And it's just like, I don't know. But that, you can see like you have all this stuff just purging out of you, like, you know, and probably she needs to spend more time not making a show of it and more time introspective and meditation to understand herself, to heal those things. But people will prolong their own healing with distractions as long as they can. But when you really go in and you face yourself, because she, you know, there's things that she needs to go in and look at, you know, for herself, I, you know, all the people in that have been in long-term relationships that are, you know, dissolving and they're questioning everything in reality, questioning life, questioning their choices. Those are all things that, you know, help you to elevate yourself is asking yourself the questions. Look at yourself. Don't blame others. Take a good hard look at yourself and go back to where it was you were wounded. And sometimes it is in past lives. And when you ask the questions to your guides, they will show you, they will bring you the past life. They will show you the past life. And I think, you know, I tell people this all the time, but I think a lot of people just think, Oh, wow, my mind just made that up. That's not real. It's like, well, you know, they can show you shit all day long, but if you're in denial and you think nothing's real, then you're not going to be listening. Um, you know, but sometimes, you know, those seeds get dropped and one of them will all of a sudden grow. So, you know, even if somebody's not hearing them, you know, they will eventually. But so, you know, I don't know. To me, like for this one person, you know, she needs to go through and really do some healing. But she's already talking about like going out and dating. It's like, that's going to just take you right back into the same timeline, the same kind of just, you know, trying to figure it out because you have to go and get to know yourself. And I don't know. I think there's people, I, I think even when I started, I thought, oh yeah, it just happens in a matter of months. Oh, you're all healed. No, it's been years. And so, and everybody's different. I'm not saying like, oh, well, she has to go in for years and stay single, no, oh, that was my choice. And like I said, I've had people ask me, oh, it's my choice. You know, when you know you have somebody who you are in alignment with your soul, like, why would you settle for something less? Like, I won't. But, you know, I mean, and she's much younger than me. So, you know, she's probably still in that life. I, I remember when I first split up, it was very much like, oh, my God, my whole life, I just spent all my life being married, you know, I'm getting old, I got to get out there. So I'm sure she's probably going through something with that. But anyways, there's just tons of relationships breaking up. And just remember, you know, you aren't who you were five minutes ago. So you certainly aren't who you were in any of those relationships. And always just look at yourself and think like, would I go back? And you know, would I go back into that relationship? And if you would, you know, there's something for you to learn there. There's something for you to learn about yourself. And probably it is that there was nothing you could do to save that relationship because it was only there to teach you. It was there to, to show you how to learn to love yourself. Because that's what everything that I have figured out, that's what the lesson has always been. Learn to love yourself. Learn to love yourself. Prioritize yourself. And, um, you know, in the toxic relationships and codependent relationships, keep you 
distracted from yourself. They keep you unstable. You know, you're not focused on yourself. You're not doing your best. You're not taking good care of yourself. And that's why is always turning you back to see that in yourself. But I do believe there is relationships out there that are good for both people. Because, you know, when you go in and you really look at yourself and you learn from your mistakes and you are introspective of ways that you can improve yourself, then, you know, it's it's changing the game. It's like, it really is so much like a leveling up, like in a video game. This whole way, the whole way we were before. And it really is like you do a certain amount of work, then you level up, then you're on the next level. Then you do this work, then you level up, you get to the next level. It really truly is like a video game. So anyways, I'm getting all sorts of messages and stuff, but you know, there's just so much stuff like right now that is just bombarding my reality with um, relationships and how people feel about themselves. And, you know, I just, I think it's important because even, you know, with my kids, like not talking to me or whatever, you know, I get, I could get all caught up in looking at myself through their eyes and feel like shit about myself. But that would be going into their perspective when their perspective is there for them to heal and grow. It's not for me to go in and see myself. I need to have clear vision of myself. And, you know, so I can take in like, oh, okay, so I hurt them. This was important to them. And I didn't acknowledge this at this time. And that's my own failing. That's my own you know, I'm, you know, like my punishment right now, or, you know, I've got kids that don't want to talk to me. So that's something I have to deal with, you know, well, if I hurt them, then good for them. If they want to stand up for themselves and not speak to me, then, you know, that's their choice. They will have to, because there's people who are like, oh my God, I can't believe it. What if, what if something happens to you? What if you die? And now you, do they even know how much that's going to bother them? And it's like, yeah, but that could be their lesson. Like, I know that. I understand that. But maybe that's what their lesson is. Like, you know, you just you just don't know. But you can't go and I can't get caught up in how they see me. Because that just interferes. And, you know, and, and then plus when someone's stuck in the past, they're basing everything that they're looking at you on who you were 20, 30, 40 years ago not who you are presently. Like if, if I were to go back, this person I am and relive my life, it would be very different. And it really is. You learn so much. Hindsight really is a, a great thing to growth because you can look back and you can see, and you can see your challenges. You can see what benefits came from the challenges. But yeah, I would never, any, any of the people I even met, oh my gosh, along my path, I would be a completely different person to them now. So I don't know. I, I just think don't get, don't hold yourself back, you know, from what you want because you live in fear of who you may be when you haven't even gone in to see who you are because it's all based on past. And the past is long gone, really. So anyways, we're headed for the future. We're headed for good times. And, you know, if, if there's relationships that are falling apart around you, just, you know, be supportive to the people. And, you know, but each person, just like I said, you know, she should be really focusing on her healing. And I know she posts a lot of stuff of it, like listening to a song and crying and stuff like that. But there's more to it than that. Like, I didn't have that outlet. I was very isolated. I was very alone. It was really was a dark night, cold, cold winter. I'm sitting there facing myself in a dark room. So, and I think it benefited me, you know, to really have to just go in and heal this stuff. So, I don't know. I, I, I see a lot of stuff as just being distractions that people use. Um but this things are going to show themselves to be a lot more serious. Like, you know, it isn't just a bad relationship and you got out of it. No, okay, just I'll, I'll end it with this one. Cause I just saw this girl and her person 
had apparently died is how she got out of this relationship. And I don't know, because I don't know her whole story. But she was just talking about like uh, being in a narcissistic relationship and how toxic it was. And it was, you know, she came from an abusive house, whatever, all these problems. And it, she had never been through anything so hard as being with this person. And now they're gone. Um, they died from something. And this person's super young, so I don't know would happen I would assume something with the sickness but um she said she was just talking about all of the things that she was facing herself like having to look at herself like why did I put myself through that why was I with somebody who treated me like that like and that is what somebody has to do you have to go in and look at the whys why 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 did I do that why do I do this? What patterns do I do? Do I even love myself? I think that's a question that everybody should ask themselves every day. Like, do I love myself? And if you can't just go in and look in the mirror and go, hell yeah, you do. Then, you know, you, you need to ask yourself why. And keep keep picking at the bones until you figure it out. Because you can go from not loving yourself at all and not even understanding that it's a part of reality to a part where, oh my gosh, I really like myself. I love myself so much. I didn't even know I was so great. <laughs> like you can't get to there. I've done it. So anyways, um, you know, just again, work on you, you know, don't hold yourself back from your experiences because you fear the unknown, you know, set yourself free. So anyways, I will talk to you later. Hopefully, I mean, my mom messaged me last night and she said, uh, I mean, she's just like, oh my God, something's going to happen. Like there's way, way too much happening right now. Like it's insane how much stuff is happening. And we're close. I feel so certain of it. Something, something big is something scary. Something horrific is going to happen. And then it's going to change everything. And I just, I don't know that it is the event that is going to change everything. Or if it's just, you know, part of the awakening. But yesterday we had these big, I don't even know. You couldn't see them, but they were so loud. It sounded like there was rockets going over my house all day. And helicopters and stuff. So, and then I had posted and somebody else said, hey, that's going on over here where I am in Ohio too. And I think they said that they're doing something, clearing or moving, um, moving military or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I notice when something is off. I notice when something new happens, even though I'm around people who just don't even notice anything. But, you know, that is what, I, when you are caught up, in your own reality, you are on those lower chakras, living life from not a healed position. You are on autopilot. You are not aware. You are not looking at things. You're just reactive. You're just surviving. So anyways, we'll see. I think, I think that we are getting closer all the time. And I just know that we'll have to go through something horrible. But it will be so much better once we do. And when my mom was sitting there saying like, uh, you know, oh, this is that and this is so horrible. This is so scary or whatever. And I was like, that's why we need it to just, you know, this is Chinese water torture. You know, no matter if it's going to be horrific, we need it to just happen because this is draining people. Like I don't, I can't even imagine the numbers with the suicides right now and the, all of the baby coffins that are being ordered. Oh, I bet you that there's some. Uh, I bet you there's so much suicide happening right now and they're not talking about it. You know, they're just talking about the sudden deaths of people and, oh my gosh, the sad stuff I keep seeing about that. Oh my gosh, young people too. Oh, this is, this is hard and it's definitely a hard thing to get through. And, you know, I, I do know when we get through it, it's going to it's the whole reason we're going to have a new age is the going through this is the creation of this new uh, us being in the new age. New age is always going to happen, but we are putting ourselves in this new age by healing ourselves and raising our vibration to meet the vibration of the planet. So anyways, I will talk to you later.
Bye.